Welcome to Florida State First Look Fall Sports. I'm your host, Tom Block, and coming up, we'll introduce you to some of the most successful athletic programs at Florida State and in all of the country. We'll start with the volleyball program, which went to the school's first ever Final Four a year ago. Then we'll move to the soccer pitch, where Mark Krikorian's team goes to soccer's Final Four, the College Cup, and we'll also sit down with the head cross-country coach on the women's and men's side, Karen Harvey and Bob Brayman. Their programs are ultra successful in their own right. It's all coming up. We're just getting started. So stay with us on Florida State First Look, Fall Sports. State volleyball team, the 2011 campaign was an historic thrill ride. Coach Chris Bull's team rolled through an undefeated home season, claimed the school's third ACC title, and became the first conference team to reach the NCAA Final Four. Looking back now, the Seminoles are still somewhat at a loss for words. I still look back and it just seems like yesterday, it, just, it still hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> Even whenever I look down at my ring or anything, it's just it's so surreal, it's very exciting. The feelings are incredible. I couldn't even, at the time, like put a word to it. It was amazing. And looking back on it, I just it makes you want to do it again that much more. Overcoming the loss of some talent due to graduation presents a challenge, but the experience of last season will serve the returnees well. Since we have that core group coming back, we're going to have the experience to be calm on the court, be collected, don't freak out in tough situations, and I think that's going to really help us get even farther this year. I just feel like um, because we made it to the final four the, the year before that we'll be able to like lead and guide the freshmen and I feel like they're already like at the level that we are. And that group of six freshmen comprise a recruiting class that ranks number three in the nation. When they first come in like first came in I was very surprised at how strong they were when they just jump into the lifting and fit right in with us. The personalities are awesome. I think that we're all going to get along really well, and it's going to, I think we could really do something really special again this year. I'm actually really excited because my sister is on the team, too. She's a new freshman, and so she's been here with me, and we're living together, so I'm so excited to get to play with her again. The march back to the top in 2012 goes through one of the toughest schedules in the nation. The Seminoles face three teams from last year's Sweet 16 before they begin play in an improved ACC. You can tell the difference between teams that have a really hard preseason and teams that don't. The teams that do go a lot farther, I think, in postseason. A lot of the teams got great freshman class coming in too, so it's definitely the ACC is getting stronger and stronger within the years, and we're going to have to keep practicing as hard as we can if we're going to want to defend our title. While last season provides confidence for this year's squad, it also provides the motto for 2012. The unfinished business thing, that just got brought up and I love it. We have a lot of unfinished business. We wanted to get even further. We were hungry for that final game. We want to go back and we, go, we want to go further. I think that's a really good motto for our team this year. Let's get right into it. Talk Florida State Volleyball with Coach Chris Poole. And obviously you had a tremendous season a year ago. First time a Florida State squad's ever advanced to the Final Four. First time an ACC school has done that. So given that, What's changed for you and your program as you enter 2012? Well, I think certainly the, the publicity has been incredible for us, whether it's been recruiting or fan support or, or just people noticing Florida State Volleyball, really for some of them the first time in at least 10 years. And I, you know, it's been exciting for the girls. The girls came out in the spring, worked hard. They had a commitment this summer to work hard. And so there's a huge expectations for the season. It was noticeable on the recruiting trail for you, the fruits of that Final Four trip to San Antonio? You know, without a doubt, it helped us out tremendously. We ended up yeah. with the third best recruiting class in the country and, and worked hard the last couple of years to get it, but certainly the program's advancement up, it helped us be able to land that. A number three recruiting class, a good core of veterans returning, but at the same time, you, were, you, you lost three key seniors. So, so talk about how you, uh, you pick up and move on life after that trio. You know, I, I think it's, it's looking at it as certainly we lost three All-Americans. They're very good, 
huge to the program. We have some great players coming in. It's going to be how quick can we get the young players up to speed to play against great programs. And we certainly have another top schedule coming into the season, and we know that it's going to be a great challenge for us. But that's just going to help push the girls as we, as we lead from preseason into conference. You always have played a, uh, a challenging schedule, which certainly helps you out in terms of seeding and RPI and whatnot. Where did you, uh, from where does that philosophy stem for you? You know, back in 2002, we had a team that was very good and didn't get into the NCAA tournament because our schedule wasn't good enough. And I worked hard that year to learn what I needed to do to schedule. And since that point, we've had one of the top 20 schedules in the country each of the year since 2002. And so it's something that's very important to me. And every year I'm, I'm trying to get a top five if I can. And so certainly we're going out there trying to schedule the best. I know you've worked with the conference too in terms of trying to raise the profile of ACC volleyball. Uh, how do you think that's going overall, especially in light of what you were able to do for the conference by being a Final Four team a year ago? Yeah, I think it's been tremendous. Since the time we've got here, you've seen more and more depth within the conference itself. And even the last couple of years, a lot of young teams, a lot of new coaches have come in. They're doing great. So I see the conference this year being the best it's ever been. And at the top part of it, there's a lot of great players coming into this conference. And so it isn't just about one or two teams at the top or one or two teams at the bottom. No, everyone has raised their level up and the top has been very, very good. The fact that, uh, you know, while you are replacing a trio of All-Americans, you do return your two setters. Uh, how significant is that to try and make up for the loss of three key players when you have your quarterback back? Well, certainly a skill positions being the setting positions and the libero position both, having those back is going to be huge because that's a little bit of a transition for you. And actually last year, we had a freshman libero in, a redshirt freshman that hadn't played collegiate ball and then had a freshman setter that was part of our package of setters. So I think we're in really good shape with those skill positions. Now it's just a matter really of having people step up and be, be able to carry us whenever, whenever we're down and we need them to make a point for us. Is the strength of the team in the middle with Ashley Neff? Is that where it starts? I would think with Ashley and Saria both, who both had great years last year. Ashley certainly was an All-American and Saria uh, ended up being All-Region. So it was, it was two great middles. Well, Coach, uh, it will be another great season for you. I'm sure you've set the bar high in your relatively short time here, so congratulations on that. But uh, with the bar setting comes more pressure, but continued success to you. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Strapped in and mentally prepared, the girls soccer team left the gate and set off on a wild roller coaster ride. But this ride was not your average Disney attraction. I think last season was kind of a roller coaster. We went through some ups and downs and we ended up in the place that we wanted to be at the end, but we just couldn't pull through all the way. I would love for every ride to kind of be smooth and slowly progress as time goes on, but um, Mark always says that your high is never as high as you think it is and your low is never as low as you think you are. And coach Mark Krikorian was right. This year was jam-packed with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Sometimes teams struggle scoring and letting in goals, and we were doing both, so it was, was kind of hard to get a momentum with both of those things going on. We would just have one or two little mistakes, and that would end up costing us the game because they would score on us on those little mistakes. But the girls remained resilient, and in the end brought home the first ACC title in history after defeating Virginia and UNC. The final game was kind of a dream in itself. Uh, going into overtime and then PKs, it's something that you kind of think you see on movies. It was amazing at the end and knowing that we finally got that title that we've been working so hard for. With a fresh ACC title in the net, the girls took the NCAA College Cup by storm, but fell short to Stanford. This year, the team has eight veterans and 13 new additions. But whether returning or just beginning, redemption seems to be high on everyone's to-do list. It gives you that much motivation when you kind of get a taste of something you want. Any team's goal isn't just to make Final Four, it's to win that title. The Sunshine State is known for being one of the most popular travel destinations. Several girls have boxed up their cleats and crossed the globe to kick it here at Florida State for more than just a vacation. It's definitely a learning experience and it's really fun to just compare like the differences of 
the U.S. and Iceland and France and Germany and everything and just being able to ask my, the, my international teammates questions. It's very eye-opening and I'm educated every day, not just on the soccer field but off. I'm very thankful that we do have such a diverse team. Whether German, Icelandic, English or French, the word champion still holds the same definition and winning that title still means everything in the world. Time to turn our attention to Florida State soccer. I'm joined by head coach Mark Kerkorian, who's uh, been with the Florida State program, done a terrific job over the last several years. Coach, good to see you. Nice to see you as well, Tom. We're going to look ahead and preview the uh, upcoming season, obviously, but uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't start here. Soccer championship, ACC champs from a year ago. Uh, you guys have competed on the national stage for a lot of years, have never won one of these. To have one of these reside in Tallahassee now, what's the significance of that for your program? Well, obviously it's nice. Uh, nice to, to win a championship of any sort. And uh, obviously the, the conference is so competitive that uh, to win the ACC championship is nice and uh, certainly kind of um, uh, pushed us into the national uh, NCAA tournament and NCAA championships, which, uh, which of course is the ultimate goal. I won't have you go player by player through the senior class, but you know, offense always uh, sells the tickets and the popcorn and all that. So Tiffany McCarty is setting all kinds of records for points and goals and assists. I mean, she is an All-American. She's the stalwart. Talk about her as a soccer player. She's just dynamic. Yeah, you know, Tiff has uh, really worked at her game. She's become a multi-dimensional -dim goal scorer. Um, I think when she first came in that uh, pretty much all of her goals were through athletic quality, which is you know, phenomenal. Uh, but now she's uh, added some, some better technique and better tactics to her game. Her movements are better now and um, uh, she's putting herself in a lot more positions to, to have good looks at the goal. Um, so, so we're counting on T-Mac to, uh, to provide some goals for us and Jessica Price as well. I think Jess a year out from, uh, uh, from her injury, I think that we can uh, count on seeing the same Price that we had two years ago where uh, she was a, a major contributing uh, a player scoring and assisting a lot of goals. When you compete at the level that Florida State does, uh, you're going to have situations where players are invited to compete for the national team. It's a good problem to have, and I know it's one that you want, but you're going to miss Cassie Coleman for, I guess, the first seven or eight games of the year. Uh, talk about that opportunity and then, I guess, the unique challenge that it presents for you to you know, have her here early in camp, then she's gone, then you've got to reintegrate her to the lineup. It's exciting for her, it's exciting for her teammates and all of us because you know, individually the goal for all of these players is to have an opportunity to play in the national team and then have a chance to have a career uh, post-college. So uh, it does pose some challenges uh, for us as a staff, but you know, we've known this was coming for nine months. So we've been preparing for it, we've recruited for it, uh, and uh, I think that the experience that she's going to have will be invaluable to her development, but also will benefit us in the long run because she will be playing and practicing with top quality coaches and, and players uh, in the U.S. national team. and. The international experience is fantastic. They're going to play against very good teams, and she's going to come back here a better player. Final thought, schedule is challenging as always. I was looking at the, you know, you have the ACC, but then the non-conference, UCF's in there, uh, Marquette, Arkansas. I mean, uh, obviously your philosophy is, you know, let's play the best so we can compete with the best at the end of the year. Yeah, you know, here at Florida State, it's all about competing for national championships. And uh, if you want to duck the, the uh, good schools, then... The chances when you know October comes in, November comes in, NCAA tournament time, you're probably going to get found out. And uh, I think over the course of our seven years, uh, we've um, we've played the best, and uh, it's helped us in the NCAA tournament. Well, coach, it's always uh, a pleasure to watch your team compete, and the uh, the success level has been tremendous. Continued success to you. We look forward to seeing this year's edition. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. You got something left, bring it in hard, okay? That first mile, let everyone else be silly. You be smart, this is your course, you should know how to run it. War, Pat, War, Pat, War, Pat, be the Let's go. Welcome back, we shift our focus to cross country. I'm joined by Florida State women's cross country coach, Karen Harvey. Coach, uh, good to see you. Congratulations on all the success your program has enjoyed, a real uh, national power. Um, but that doesn't automatically guarantee that'll continue. So what excites you about this time of year as you try and put all the pieces together and, and prepare for 2012? Well, the, uh, the ladies will be here in a few days, so I'm getting pretty pumped about that and, and just seeing them all again. And 
um, getting everybody together. Uh, but yeah, we have two amazing leaders and returners, seniors, uh, Amanda Winslow, Viola Legat, and they are incredible, talented runners, but they're also great leaders. They have a tremendous amount of character, and I know that a lot of our other girls will follow them and follow their example, and even in everyday life. So it's nice to have that leadership um, and, and the talent, and of course behind them we've got enough fire, firepower this year, I think, to, to have a really good season again. And it's veteran firepower. Six of seven of your top seven runners return, eight of, eight of your top ten. Uh, how significant is that? I mean, it's fantastic. Um, I, I think we're going to have one young lady, only one, having never run the national meet before. Um, and, and that is a very hard learning curve to work against. And, and that is Georgia Peel, who's um, from Britain, and she's an incoming freshman. So I'm going to have one girl that doesn't know what it's like. Rather than last year, I think we had four. And they were key players. So that was, that was a little scary. Um, but this year, yes, we have a lot more experience at the national level. Florida State is going to host the regional championships this year, which I know is, is key and you guys are excited about it. Uh, talk a little bit about that, but also how Tallahassee is really an ideal place to train for a sport that you coach in cross country. I love Tallahassee, and we call it Trailahassee unofficially. You know, I think maybe uh, we need to trademark that, that we call it Trailahassee. But you know, I was, uh, there was a storm recently on, on Tom Brown, I, I was running on Tom Brown's trail, West Lafayette Trail. And it literally was the next morning and the parks crew was coming through to remove all the trees and the branches. And I just stopped and I said, thank you. The city of Tallahassee is so runner friendly and trail friendly, biker friendly, walker friendly. Um, it's an incredible place to, to um, train and, and for our young kids to go out and run on soft surface, which helps them stay healthy. And then having the Appalachian Regional Park for regionals, how exciting. I mean, finally, we can invite the community to come see a big race, a big race. And we're not like volleyball and soccer, where we have all these home matches and home games. We don't have them. Well, here it is. Come support us and come help us get to nationals right in Tallahassee. And a, and a final thought from you. I mean, you guys have picked up a few of these. This is an ACC championship trophy. Uh, congratulations there. You've, you, you know, nationally, you've been on the, in the top five on the podium the last several years. Uh, what will it take for you guys to be the top team this year? Well, that's always the question, isn't it? <laughs> um, been talking about that for a few years here to win the national championship. So, but um, it's just, you know, continuing our program and keeping them healthy. And, you know, that's going to be our number one goal is the ACC championship. And then we're going to build from there. Well, Coach, uh, it's always a pleasure to see the success of your team. Continued success. Best of luck this year. Thank you. Help your teammates out. Good chance for PR. So you guys are really, really fit. Okay, it could be Knowles on three. One, two, three. Knowles! Let's turn our focus now to men's cross country. I'm joined by Bob Brayman, who uh, has been the coach at Florida State for a number of years now. Congratulations on the all-around success of your program. And, and, and tell me about, uh, you know, kind of your thought, pr thought process, optimism as you enter another year with 2012 right around the corner. Uh, this year's similar to our last two years. Uh, we're looking at top 10. That's what our goal is. I think that's pretty much where our program is for men's uh, cross country, and, and it's a realistic goal. It's a position with the athletes that we're in to, to, to shoot for that. Um, you know, of course, two years ago when we finished second in the country, that was a, a surprise. We felt like we were top 10 the whole year and got a little bit better. So that's always what your ultimate goal is, to have that special day and get on that podium and be in the top four. But you know, our main goal for the whole program is to be in contention and maybe win, as we have the last two years, win the John McDonald Trophy for the best all-around program. So we've got to be really very lucky and stay healthy and, you know, have our young athletes step up a little more quickly than if we put more money into distance. So, um, you know, got to be a little fortunate, got to get on, on, on the right side of it. And last year, you know, we were on the wrong side of it. You know, one of our top guys, All-American candidate Wes Rickman, got hurt. And, uh, and really couldn't be that top three guy in our team for us. And instead he was just trying to fight through the meets and hold the team together as a captain. So, um, you know, that put us in 12th place, which isn't bad, but that kept us from being really um, what I think we could have been, which would have been a top five program. 
Yeah, well, Wes is, Wes is back, and, uh, you know, Mike Fout is not, but David Forrester, I guess, is maybe where it starts for you. Elaborate there a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we've got a good group um, back and a good, you know, really, really good old team, maybe the oldest team I've ever coached. We've got, uh, you know, we've got Brendan O'Neill back uh, in his sixth year because he was a graduate um, in Ireland of, uh, of a four-year degree and came here for graduate school, and because he didn't compete in the university setting over there, he was able to get a six-year over here, which is very fortunate. So you've got Dave Forrester, you know, who's one of the highest finishers ever. He's second highest finisher behind Kenny Meisner in our program's history at the national championship and an, an All-American. Um, and then Brendan O'Neill, who was, you know, ACC champion. So those two guys, and then, you know, Wes Rickman, who almost made All-American the year before, and then a really good bunch of guys coming, uh, coming up and getting better each year and a lot more depth than we've had. They've just got to grow up in a hurry. You talked about being, uh, you know, an all-around program, and, and last year you had the ACC Scholar Athlete in men's and women's cross country. That's obviously a point of focus too. It is, and our, our our coaches and our athletes have done a great job, and we've had more academic All-Americans than almost anybody in the country in the last couple of years and the last several years. So it is a point of emphasis. It comes really from the student athletes who take it seriously, exercise science majors, real majors who are really getting after it before it was Fout and now Forrester and many others. So it's, it's, it's their trend that they set. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on your success. Best of luck this year. Thanks. Appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us here. And remember, you can follow Florida State Athletics at any point right here or log on to Seminoles.com. We'll see you next time.